Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Well, the numbers for the opening weekend of the Captain Marvel movie are out, and what I'm going to talk about today is the fact that you can bet your bottom dollar that with the numbers for this opening weekend, Marvel and other companies as well are going to use those numbers to produce this agenda-driven kind of product again and again. And it really doesn't matter whether or not these numbers are correct. It really doesn't matter how they came upon these numbers. It really doesn't matter if they used means to confuse everything and make it look like this movie has a lot more support than it actually does. It doesn't matter. They have those numbers that's all they need to hang their hat on. And I can positively say that because they've been doing this exact type of thing over at Marvel Comics again and again. You have these characters in Marvel Comics, these progressive characters that are doing spectacularly poor with their own series. They keep on getting canceled, but they say things like, well, look, the library sales of the trade paperback did really well. Therefore, there must be a groundswell of support for this character. And so we're going to have to make another series for this character. So they use those kinds of justifications all the time. And that's just a little thing for them to hang their hat on. And they still use it as a justification. I've done a number of videos where I go over all of this going on at Marvel Comics. And if you want just a taste of what this Captain Marvel opening weekend is going to do to Marvel Comics itself, well, there were three tweets put out by Sana Amanat, the second in command at Marvel Comics, during the weekend, one after another after another. And one of them was, hmm, I remember when people said, no one wanted girl comic book heroes. And then the next one was, hmm, I remember when people said, no one wanted a female Captain Marvel. And then the last one was, Remember girls, hashtag we are here to stay. And these are all connected to retweets of the Captain Marvel movie doing so well in its opening weekend. So it's already started to affect Marvel Comics. Like I said in a number of my videos, they were just waiting for something like this to happen over at Marvel Comics so they could justify all the progressive, quote unquote, progressive garbage that they're putting out and it's already started. But the big question is really, how is this going to affect the movies? And I certainly think that it's going to affect a lot of different properties, not just the MCU. But I think there are two movies that we can look at that we can positively say that they are going to affect. Number one would be the next Captain Marvel movie. And number two would be the next Wonder Woman movie. Now, you can see obviously how this is going to affect the next Captain Marvel movie because there is going to be a next Captain Marvel movie. And you had people like Brie Larson saying before this Captain Marvel even came out that she wanted to have Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel in the next Captain Marvel movie and people at the company were supporting her in saying this. So I would say that's definitely on the table for the next Captain Marvel movie, if not sooner. And besides that, I'm sure that the next Captain Marvel movie will continue with this feminist progressive agenda as they clearly stated they had for this first movie. But what about the other one? I'm sure some of you are scratching your heads saying, why would this affect the Wonder Woman movie? Well, there are a number of reasons. The first one would be the fact that when everybody was in an uproar about this movie coming out, and I would say justifiably about this movie and the pushing of an agenda with this movie, they all said, look, we already had a female superhero and she was great and we didn't care that it was a woman. It was a good hero and it was a good story. Just give us more of that. And that movie was, of course, Wonder Woman. And the problem with doing that is when you talk to these people on the other side, these agenda driven people, all that they hear is, I love Wonder Woman. And they would say in their minds, hmm, you love Wonder Woman? Really? Well, I guess that's what we're going to have to destroy next. And some of you may think that I'm being dramatic, but again, if you follow what's going on with the comic books and the comic pros and these people that are all over Twitter, these comic pros, they do that exact thing all the time. They pinpoint something that you dearly love in the mythology of one of these comic universes and use it against you by destroying it. And most commonly, the way that they destroy it is they turn it towards their own agenda so that they can point and laugh at you and say, ha ha, look, it was part of our agenda all along and you fell for it. They've been doing this over at Marvel and a little bit at DC too 
for quite some time. So that's number one. But there is a very interesting connection between these two heroes of Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman. And that connection would be the comic book writers that originally created both the current Captain Marvel and the current Miss Marvel. Those two creators, the writers for those two characters, were respectively Kelly Sue DeConnick and G. Willow Wilson. And I just want to go over these two individuals as examples of people working in the comic book industry itself, because they are just two examples of a plethora of these kinds of people running comic books and writing comic book stories right now. Because the thing is that the Captain Marvel movie was specifically set up, as stated by Kevin Farge and Marvel itself, it was specifically set up to proceed upon the stories of Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, from 2012 onward, which was the Captain Marvel created by Kelly Sue DeConnick, which was quite specifically created as an agenda-driven character, a progressive agenda-driven character. And because the Captain Marvel movie was set upon those stories from the comics, those progressive stories from 2012 onwards, and because Captain Marvel has done so well in the first weekend, I do believe that you will now see these kinds of stories, these current progressive agenda-driven stories, now being translated into the movies for both Marvel and DC. And not just DC, but quite specifically Wonder Woman. Why? Because you have these two creators. One, Kelly Sudaconic created the current version of Captain Marvel, which you see in the movie. The other, G. Willow Wilson, created Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, which you will most likely see within the MCU in the not-too-distant future. And the funny thing is that both of these creators are now working at DC Comics writing Wonder Woman. G. Willow Wilson is writing Wonder Woman in the main continuity of DC Comics right now, and Kelly Sudaconic is writing Wonder Woman for DC Black Label. And, as I hope to show you from a couple of quotes that I'll give you in a minute or two, both of these writers, what they intend to do when they either create a character or take over a character, is to insert a progressive narrative into the character and, in effect, reimagine the character around that progressive narrative, slowly introducing it and building more and more so that this is what the character becomes from that point moving forward. Now, quickly, some people might say, well, look, the Wonder Woman movie has already been shot. They wrapped up shooting in December of last year, I do believe. But it's going to be another year, year and a half before the movie actually comes out. And in a year, year and a half, you can do a whole lot of reshoots. And you can have the editor do magic in the editing room in order to make this movie into what you want it to look like, no matter what kind of footage you actually have. Okay, so let's go over a couple of quotes from both of these comic writers. The first ones I'll do from G. Willow Wilson. Now, I did an entire video on this particular article that she did with the New York Times, and if you want to go back through my videos and look for it, it's the one that has a thumbnail where Wonder Woman looks like a man in drag dressed up in a Wonder Woman costume. That's the one. So she was asked by the reporter, does writing comics in this political moment feel significant to you? And she answered, obviously, we are in an exceedingly contentious political climate right now, and everything in pop culture feels quite fraught in a way that it didn't when I was first breaking into comics. And then she further goes on to say, I think any responsible artist in this particular climate has to take those things into consideration and know in a clear-headed way what they believe, what the characters stand for, and how best that character can serve the audience in this time. And not use the art form as some kind of political bludgeon, but also not to be naive and pretend that these aren't issues that are affecting people's lives in a real way, and that they aren't looking to these heroes to make a stand. So, she is actually saying that, well, you have to be very light-handed. You can't use your writing as a political bludgeon, but you can't be naive enough to say that it has no political impact whatsoever. It actually affects people's lives in a real way, and that they are actually looking towards these heroes to make a stand for what is right. And what does she think that right is? Well, let's go over a couple of more quotes. The reporter asks her a question that starts off, you've never shied away from politics in your work and then goes on to ask about the politics in her work. But the answer to that question is, 
It's been difficult to watch events unfold over the course of the past 18 months. In many ways, it's made me feel frustrated because I think in the best of times, we really lionize writers and artists and say, oh, you can change the world. What you write and what you draw, you never know what it's going to kickstart and who it's going to inspire. But then when push comes to shove and things get really bad, as they have recently, you start to realize how limited your power is. And she goes on further to talk about why over the last 18 months, in her words, things have gotten so bad recently. This is what she says. Before this administration, I kind of bought into the artist change the world values in a very uncritical way. It's not that I think it's untrue. I think demonstrably art changes the world, but I don't know that it's really the art itself. I think it's the way that art inspires people who then go out and put their physical bodies between people who are in trouble and the people who want to hurt them. Those are the real heroes. And she further goes on to say, I've come to understand that, I think, in a visceral way, that the symbols are important. I've come to see my role as much more service-oriented, that I'm supporting the leaders and trying to be a bastion for them and give them the things that are useful and ideas and concepts that are useful to them in their day-to-day -day lives, because I think the critical thing now is not to give up hope. So if you can provide hope fuel, that is what you can do. It's both a very small thing and a very great thing. So this is her saying that the world is dark outside because of the current administration in the White House, and that she, with her art, is going to support the leaders that are opposed to this so she can provide them with a bastion, that is to say, a stronghold they can retreat to, and give them useful things and ideas and concepts that they can use and hope to prop them up and fuel what they can do against what she sees as an unjust America. And that's a really important thing to her. She doesn't think her art actually changes the world. She thinks that her art can inspire people to change themselves, who can then in turn go out and make change in the world. But of course, we know exactly what kind of change this is, because she states unequivocally here that things have gotten so bad recently in the last 18 months because of the current administration in the White House. So you know obviously what kind of leaders she is supporting. You know obviously what kind of ideas she is applying. These are progressive ideas that she is supporting and she is putting into her work to inspire people who can then in turn go out and make change in the world. So to move on and look at Kelly Sue DeConnick and look at some of the quotes that she's put out there. Now, she says almost exactly the same thing in this talk that she did before. I think it was university students. By the way, I'm including the links for all of these in the description if you want to go look them up. And in that talk, she specifically says almost the exact same thing, that she doesn't know how to affect change in the world with her art. She doesn't think it's a bad thing if she actually knew how to do it. But this is what she says. If I knew how to make art that causes positive social change, believe me, I would have done it before coffee this morning. And what she goes on to talk about is, again, the exact same thing that G. Willow Wilson was talking about. She can't actually affect change with her art. All she can do is to inspire other people to affect change within themselves and then take that change and use it to go affect positive change in the world. And again, we have to look at what this quote-unquote positive change in the world looks like. Well, this woman refers to herself twice in this talk, once as an intersectional white feminist comic book writer, and another time as a liberal leftist intersectional feminist. And no, in case you're wondering, I'm not stuttering. She actually says a liberal leftist intersectional feminist. And so... What do her positive values actually look like? Well, let's move over to another article, one she just did recently with Newsarama. And she said, I had a very difficult year creatively. I think, I hesitate to say this, the election kind of knocked me on my ass and I had to reevaluate a lot of things. So again, you see almost the exact same words that G. Willow Wilson was saying. It's all about the election. And she goes on to talk about her writing and how it is political. And she says that her main comic that she puts out herself is, quote, entirely political. And she says, and while personally that's very important to me, Aquaman, which is what she is writing right now, Aquaman is not political. 
Her book, she says, is very personal and very political, and I won't apologize. But when you look at this quote, you also have to look at a few other things that she has said in other venues, because Kelly Sue DeConnick is infamous for saying in a tweet that comics have always been political. And if you don't recognize that, you just haven't been paying attention. So here, when she says that Aquaman that she's writing isn't political, well, what she's actually saying is it's not on the nose political. It's subtly political because she believes that comics are always political. And what is this politics that she is talking about and she is following and she wants to promote? Well, she says it right here and in a number of different places. She says, I'm very interested in intersectional feminist issues. As a white woman, it is super important and incumbent upon me to engage in politics of race because we have historically behaved so abominably. I have contributed to the oppression of others, and it's really awkward and uncomfortable and a thing that you want to run away from. But I think as an artist and as a human being, I have to go where I'm uncomfortable and take those risks to try to learn, to try to be super humble. It's super awkward and it sucks, but it's really important. Now, as you see from this quote, she says, as an artist, she has to go where she's uncomfortable. She has to go into these avenues as an artist, even though it makes her uncomfortable. This is the kind of politics that she inserts into her stories. And more specifically, I want to give you one last quote from her to give you an idea of how these types of writers actually think. This is what she says. Part of not being a racist involves acknowledging that I come from a position of privilege in a culture that is historically racist, and I don't get not to be a racist without rigorous self-examination and correction on my part. This is important. Doing the right thing is not a passive act. Now, the reason I really wanted to go over that last one was because Here's the fundamental ideas behind what she is putting out there in her progressive stories. Fundamentally underlying everything that she believes is the fact that you have a dynamic in society of the oppressor and the oppressed. What this is, this is just a switching out of old Marxist ideas. You know, Karl Marx, who actually set it up as having a lower class and an upper class. They've just switched out those terms so that you now have an oppressed class and an oppressor class. And of course, who is that oppressor class? Well, that's men, white men in particular. And the funny thing is that if you go over what she just said, her ideology actually flips on its head the idea of innocent until proven guilty. No, within the ideology that she is promoting, you are guilty until proven innocent. That is to say, you are automatically a racist unless you first recognize your position of privilege and then certainly as someone who lives in the Western world recognize that your culture is historically racist and then you have to act to counter both of those things and it has to be something that is done it can't be a passive thing you can't just realize this you have to go out and act so unless you recognize all of those things and unless you do all of those things you are automatically a racist and as I said these two women are just two examples of the people that are writing comics right now there are many many more people like these two writing comics right now but these are the two that are writing the specific stories or have written the specific stories that are going to continue on into the MCU and into the DCEU moving forward because of the success of Captain Marvel so if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right hand corner of your screen to subscribe and tell me what you think about this. Tell me whether or not these are the types of agenda driven stories that you want to see in your superhero movies moving forward. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.